This video is sponsored by EssentialDeveloper.com by Kyo and Mike. They're offering a free course for iOS developers who want to master scalable architectural patterns and become one of the most wanted developers in the world. It's a three-day crash course, 100% online, where you'll take the first steps to work on large iOS projects, have a bigger impact, and consequently increase your salary. Many of Kyle and Mike's students at Essential Developer get jobs at large companies worldwide. During this free crash course, you can ask questions directly to Kyle and Mike, and as a bonus, you'll also have access to live mentoring sessions. The course is online, so you can follow the lessons from the comfort of your home. It's 100% free, so take advantage of this opportunity. If you want to become a real senior developer, this course can make all the difference in your career. The course is available for a short period of time, so visit EssentialDeveloper.com slash Afraz to secure your free spot now. Today we're going to be talking about NS ordered sets, a variant of sets that are pretty useful in everyday applications. So before we jump into things, smash that like button down below, say hello in the comments for the YouTube algorithm, and let's dive in. So today we'll work in a playground. It's the easiest place to actually exemplify this stuff. So let me go and create said playground. Let's be super creative today and call this NS ordered uh, set. And let's see if I can get my spelling correct. There we are, NS ordered set and save it wherever you'd like and full screen that Xcode window. So cool, so before we jump into NS ordered set, let's create a basic set and let's see one obvious problem with it. So we'll create a set here. I'm gonna explicitly type this as a set of integers and we'll create it with a set of a few numbers. Maybe we'll go to six here. So we'll say five and six. Now we're just gonna loop over these. So I'll say my set dot for each and we'll just want to print out each of these. So down in our console, we can open this up by dragging it or hitting Command Shift Y if you're unfamiliar. I'll hit the play button and we'll see that a bunch of numbers get printed out if it does decide to actually work. So it wants me to save apparently. All right, we'll save, that's fine. All right, and we get our numbers printed out. So the first thing I'll notice is these numbers are not in the order in which we have uh, defined them up here. And that's by design. Sets are not ordered. Uh, otherwise, they'd be called ordered sets. Um, so that's, that's an obvious issue in a variety of applications, right? So for, perhaps you want to have unique elements stored. Numbers are a trivial example, but perhaps order matters as well. So you can imagine in something like a Twitter-like application, let's say you wanna make sure that a feed or timeline has unique posts by post ID. So you want uniqueness, but you wanna maintain order as well. So one common approach is, well, hey, use an array, and whenever you loop over it to dedupe, basically, check if a particular element exists in the array, and if it, it doesn't contain that element, add it, uh, and otherwise just ignore it. So. That's certainly one way to do it, but we can use the Swift language more uh, in a more interesting and powerful way. So let's bring in ordered sets. And actually, before I even do that, one other thing I want to call your attention to is if I want to just get the last object out of this, I can't do that, right? Like I would need, I can't random access the last element in here uh, easily. I can't subscript it and say, give me my set dot count minus one. Sometimes you just want to know the first or last element. And the obvious reason we can't do that is because under the hood, Swift is not maintaining order for this. Cool, so ordered sets. So let's create a, another thing under here. I'll call it my ordered set. And this will be NS ordered set. And let's make sure I spell that correctly because obviously that is important. So NS ordered set. Now this can be created like this or there is a constructor that allows you to pass in an array as well as whether or not to copy the items. So I'll just pass in this array, which is the same syntax as this set up here. And we'll do the same thing here by just looping over it. And obviously what we expect to get is the numbers printed out with the order maintained. I'm just gonna put a line break here and just say ordered so we can have some distinction down in our console. So we'll go ahead and give this a run and now obviously they are ordered. So this is pretty, pretty simple, but there's a couple of interesting points to call out. And the first one is the fact that you can actually subscript on this. In other words, I can actually say 
printout.last, and you'll notice that it's last object, and the reason that you have this uh, object uh, nomenclature here is because NS ordered set is actually a subclass of NS object. So this is from Objective C days for those of you unfamiliar. You'll also see the type is any optional. So while we were able to use generics here to uh, more appropriately type guard our set, NS ordered set uh, do not provide that. Certainly you can add extensions onto NS ordered set to meet your needs, but we will need to actually go and uh, typecast appropriately. We'll ignore the warning because we know it is indeed correct. So I will give this a run once more. So I'll pause and run. And down here we'll see we get optional six. It's optional because of course we are optionally casting it to an integer. That's the last object. Similarly, you can also get the first object. You can also get the first where something uh, more or less matches a uh, predicate, if you will. So you can treat this more or less as an array. And I realize I've said more or less 10 times. Um, so it's an array with all the performance and uniqueness uh, attribution of a set. And the last thing that I'll call out here, which is something that I always forget myself, is this is marked as a variable, aka it should be mutable. Should it not? Well, the answer is it should be, but in reality, it is not. So if you try to do an append, or if you try to do maybe an insert, you'll see that this dot set insert increase uh, uh, does exist, but it won't actually work. If I try to do this, you'll see an error is gonna pop up. So while the autocomplete does in fact show that that's available for the underlying set of this NS ordered set, this isn't allowed. And this also predates Swift, and this is a mutability concept of Objective-C. So nowadays we have arrays that we can mark as constant or variable, but back in the day, we used to have a NS array and an NS mutable array. And I say back in the day, but that's still heavily used today in a lot of applications. So similarly, we have NS mutable ordered set. And this is identical, except it now provides APIs for mutability. In other words, I can actually say my ordered set, we can add 12, and let's add a few more, 13, 14. Uh, respectively, we also have insert operations such that we can provide a index and you can insert there, very akin to an array where we are able to index from zero. There are also remove operations. We can remove a particular object, all objects. It's basically a fancy array. So let's go and move this for loop to print out the ordered elements down here. And we'll give our uh, playground a final run just to make sure we are able to appropriately add said elements. So we get 12, 13, 14 down here. We indeed are. And that is a NS ordered set in a nutshell. This is one of those things that I've actually found myself using over the past several years, way more often than I thought I would when I first uh, found out about it. Many years ago, accidentally, when I didn't know sets were not ordered, uh, so similarly, I should actually call out there is a in the in the land of Objective C a NS set which is uh, akin to sets here, similar to it being not ordered. So NS ordered set and mutable ordered set provides the uh, sequencing and order ability, if you will. So that is all I've got in today's video. Last thing that I'll mention here, that this video is indeed sponsored by EssentialDeveloper.com. If you're interested in becoming a senior iOS developer, learning appropriate scalable architecture patterns, check out the link in the description for a free three-day online crash course they are running. Thanks again for EssentialDeveloper.com by Kayo and Mike for sponsoring this video. Drop a like before clicking away. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Subscribe if you're into iOS tech, Swift, Swift UI, whole nine yards, connect on the socials. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.